Pam, pam, pam. I love the word cook. Because the word cook in Spanish is cocinero. A cocinero is a person on the stove, filling the fire. This project has taken a little over two years, maybe more, two and a half, because it started pre-COVID and was immediately impacted by that. Most of my work as a director was done, it was remote. I was texting, I was calling, I was encouraging. So I, I kept my head in it, but I wasn't boots on the ground. You know, our crew for this was actually very small. A guy named Walter Madison was leading that group primarily. Also Meredith Colfers was there. We had various people uh, embedded, but we also depended a lot on footage that World Central Kitchen was generating itself, which was everything from Canon 5D, the 300, to iPhone footage. The team that was embedded filmed in, uh, I believe, three different countries. I have no idea how many meals we actually filmed, but I had to constantly, as a director, keep reminding our team to pick up the camera and keep shooting because they'd get so caught up in the spirit of the organization, they'd put the camera down and start making sandwiches. I am Jose Andres. We're here with a simple mission, to make sure that food is an agent of change. As you looked into and developed and, and saw World Central Kitchen's operation, you know, what does Jose do that government organizations can't? You know, why does World Central Kitchen work? Jose uh, lands in the middle of a situation, and from the beginning, he just begins to look around and ask questions. He believes their past performances or the formulas and strategies they've used, they might be relevant or they might have to think of something brand new. Begin with food. Just get there and start making sandwiches. That's always day one. And they now have resources so that they, they're not just asking for volunteers. They're actually able to help sustain um, the work those people are doing and make it possible for them to commit full time. Some activations, it can be about getting medicine in there as much as it is food. Um, and others, it can be about helping people get out. But it's always, it's always built around food, one plate at a time. Sometimes it's very difficult to start doing hot food in the first hour. But something you can be doing amazingly is quick, fast sandwiches that can bring very quick relief. What was it about the organization that made you start to realize this could be the perfect you know, subject for a documentary? I got to know uh, Jose, and occasionally I would cross his path at a conference, again, where he was speaking and I was speaking. Then... He showed up in a documentary I made about the fire in Paradise, California, also for National Geographic, called Rebuilding Paradise. And I just realized that he was operating in conditions large and small. And I began following him on Instagram and Twitter and understanding how much the organization was growing. I began to believe it could be a film. The National Geographic team was very interested in, in Jose as a subject. and he was less interested. Finally, I approached him and he said, if you wanted to make a film about the team and the organization, I'll, I'll facilitate that. And I know I have to be in it and even central in it because I'm still very central in the organization. But I don't want you to tell the Jose Andres story. I want you to tell the story of World Central Kitchen, which is the one that I wanted to tell. And in the end, it is kind of an origin story of how volunteerism can evolve. It can be infectious in a very positive way and it can grow into something as powerful and significant as World Central Kitchen is today in a very short period of time. Take a look, we're going through very high water. It's the only way to be delivering food. I'm so glad that we have this track. I hope we are able to feed the people, but I hope we are gonna be safe. What was the first piece of footage or the first scene that you all shot that really clicked in for you what this documentary was going to be about? The first scene was not one that we shot. It was one that came from the World Central Kitchen archives. North Carolina, I think it was 2018, a horrible storm there and a flood. They had a truck with huge wheels. They were traversing this flooded area. And suddenly, and with the cameras continuing to roll, the truck tipped over. We never saw a wide shot of the truck because the cameras were all on the truck, but you saw it going over. Well, it was very cinematic. 
it immediately demonstrated that these people were putting themselves in physical peril in addition to just donating time and energy. And immediately, the producers, the editorial team, myself, we just said, that's in the movie. And it's certainly a building block. Let's look, let's look for more of that. Walter Madison led the team into the field. And, you know, it was New York City. It was Navajo Nation, which began to tell also the story of volunteerism. And we began understanding the way the organization was working today. And it made all the more important to tell that origin story. How did Jose in Haiti become World Central Kitchen, you know, dur during COVID? I worry a lot when he goes because you never know what crazy thing he would do. She's asking when we're coming back home. Soon. We gotta feed some people and then your dad can come back. What are the biggest challenges about filming in a natural disaster? Was there a time when you felt scared for the crew? I didn't feel much fear for the crew outside of the fact that at the earliest spikes of COVID, our, our teams were in the field with World Central Kitchen, with Jose and with others, New York, Navajo, other places, you know, and I was very concerned about their health. Uh, and they were taking precautions and doing all the things that they, that they could do, um, but I was concerned about it. That was also a real limitation for us because during the period where our filmmaking team was most available, where, where Nat Geo had given us the resources to really cover the events, it wasn't a period of a lot of storms. World Central Kitchen was largely focused on the COVID crisis, which again, for them, was a new application of strategy that was, you know, that was ever, ever shifting. So a lot of, a lot of what I was doing was, yes, what we could capture in the field, but also the story passed present and sort of anticipating the future and what we could do in terms of news footage and also their own their their own footage that we could find edit and shape he was doing so much and yet feeling like it wasn't sufficient i'm almost getting a million dollar line of credit or money i don't even have what was one of the most pressing issues that world central kitchen always battles that the crew is always facing no matter what disaster area they go into they always have to read the landscape and understand the culture of the world they're entering. And they're very, very good about that. They understand what it is people need and how they need it delivered, whether it's the way the food is cooked or it's the way you deal with the infrastructure, whether that's governmental or local restaurateurs or individuals to make things possible. And of course, then there's the risk. In the past, the risk has always been that they're either in or on the edge of a storm. And you're dealing with people whose emotions are, are very raw. They have to be aware of that. Now, there's another le level here. Now they're in a war zone. Um, and ap applying what they've learned, deputizing those who, who can make a huge difference, and putting themselves directly in harm's way. And, um, it, uh, you know, I, I'm in awe of it and it frightens me both. You have to respect people. Food is about community. It's about having food your way and not the way some white savior thinks it should be cooked. And I think that really shaped World Central Kitchen in all of its operations moving forward. Jose and the team are in Ukraine right now. Did you ever have any thoughts about how do we continue this this journey, this documentary? You know, even though you guys were already very much done by this well, point. Well, well, done was done in our case, and people have moved on to other projects. And uh, as it, as is uh, always happens in the documentary world, and so you know, yes, it's an ongoing story. But we had to we had to stop and basically decide what we are. And to me, it's an introduction for many people who may have seen Jose either doing a cooking bit on television or talking about World Central Kitchen, might be aware, may have seen him on the cover of Time Magazine, but don't really understand, A, what World Central Kitchen is, but even more importantly, how an organization like that grows. So yeah, there, there are more stories to tell, um, but ours is really, um, I think about, in, in a very short period of time, the, the establishment uh, and evolution of a, of a powerful idea 
in the way it's executed and the way it's succeeding. The emergency has this amazing way to speak to you. You only have to listen. You can listen to the situation. You can listen to the wind. You can listen to the people.